You've tuned into the Bellingham Podcast for the week of August 12, 2018. We're back. Episode 89. We're back. From that hot city by the Salish Sea, I am AJ Barce. And sizzling and sweltering in 9226, I am Chris Powell. On this episode, girl, you know it's true. AJ and I were just mentioning how much we miss you much. We've been sitting here, right here, waiting for you. It's just another day in paradise, y'all. So let's get things started. This is the Bellingham Podcast. Ooh, that was a hot hook. How you doing, Chris? I'm toasty, burnt, and crispy. Uh, not just my first name and last initial. How are you, AJ? I'm pretty good. I missed you. Yes, indeed. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, I had a I had to take uh, some station break time. Thanks very much podcast subscribers out there in internet land. Uh, I had a professional conference I had to go to to learn things. And uh, I celebrated another trip around the sun where I have gone most of my career, if not all, by taking my birthday off. As you should. From from work. So that was a good way to like disconnect, uh, spend time with uh, family, and, uh, and also learn things uh, after my birthday. So we're back! Yay! So with that said, uh, just at the top of the show, this is the conclusion of our Urban Hikers Grand Tour, which I want to thank everybody for listening and subscribing to. This series actually has had a lot of traction. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad that everybody has been enjoying our <laughs> witty banter of the outdoors and our different take of just get out. From people who aren't professional hikers or outdoors people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to be a mountaineer or or buy into this this notion that you have to summit eight peaks in eight weeks to, to feel the outdoors. Nah, just get out and that that's kind of more the important part that Chris and I wanted to really harp on and uh, we're really glad that all of you have enjoyed this series. Yes. So anyway, um, what have you been up to in these past couple weeks? Well, uh, a few things. I've been doing some traveling locally and adventuring and with that said, my, my big hike for the summer is I went up to Winchester Mountain. Now, where's that? Winchester Mountain, if you're heading out on uh, Mount Baker Highway, it is, uh, I can't remember exactly the, the the Forest Service road, but before you go up the, the long switchbacks going up to Baker, there is a little gas fire station on the left-hand side. Right there is the Twin Lakes Road. Okay. Forest, uh, I'll put a link in the show notes, Forest Road 5... 80 something I think yes and it's a really cool road to go to go up a uh, four-wheel drive and high clearance vehicles highly advised yes don't take the smart car up this road folks <laughs> it will break <laughs> that's right uh, and anyway it's, it's about a seven eight nine ten mile road a mountain road not paved rugged can I can, if I express it enough road and um, perfect example I used to have a rav4 and I actually got high centered once hmm. going up that road, meaning that a rock boulder uh, caught my my rear end, and Ouch. I was kind of teetering on on two wheels. Not good. Like I said, it, uh, mileage will vary on this road if uh, you do not have something with a lot of ground clearance. With that said, the, the road was great going up. Um, a couple of washouts uh, over the winter it looks like, mm. and but it was in pretty decent shape. Uh, but when you go up to Winchester Mountain uh, or Twin Lakes, that's the the actual camp camping area by these two beautiful glacier-esque uh, lakes, there's a trailhead at, right at the spit in between the twins. And you go up this trail, and it's it's a fairly decent hike. It's it's not hard, but it's not uh, super easy. It's about four and a half miles round trip. How much ele- elevation uh, did you get? Uh, you, you, you gain like 1,300 feet of elevation. Uh-huh. <laughs> Chris, yeah. you can do it. You can no, do it. It's an easy hike. Okay, yeah, I no problem. Oh. I did not say it was easy, but I did it's, not say it was hard. A, it's not a hard hike. That's <laughs> like saying I'm, yeah, anyway, never mind. So what's cool about <laughs> uh, Winchester Mountain is uh, if you go up just the, the generic route, because there's two routes, um, it takes you up to a lookout tower, a fire watch tower. And that lookout tower is the Winchester Mountain lookout tower. And most of the time during the season, first come, first serve, you can camp up there. That's helpful. Unfortunately, this go around, uh, as of late last year, a whole bunch of storm and uh, damage got mm. on on like the, I should have paid attention to which side. I'm going to guess it's the windward side of the, the lookout tower and there's a ton of water damage. So there was mm. a tender up there who, now this is cool, a volunteer hiking mm-hmm. up that trail. Yep. 
chunks of lumber to fix this oh thing. Oh my goodness. Uh, props to, I, I can't remember his name, but um, props to you and your skookum dog. Yes. Uh, because that, you want to talk about a labor, labor of love just to maintenance this, this, um, historic, I guess, uh, lookout is just amazing. Well, we also should give a, a tip of the hat to all those people in the past, yeah. in the, the legacy volunteers who made a either one or two person walking trail, uh, and cleared the brush, chopped the trees down, used the chainsaws for felled trees to, so that people can pass through. Uh, there's just so many people that don't really get that recognition for the beauty that we get to experience yeah. in this area. So, and especially in cases of repair. So yeah. good on them for, uh, repairing this <laughs> really cool, uh, feature at the top. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. And, uh, that, that station and I have, uh, a, a good history because, um, I got, stuck on that mountain once and it saved my bacon and I'll just leave it at that. But uh, anyway, this trip, uh, I did a, a day hike. I love this mountain for a multitude of reasons. Not so much lately because it's been a discovered place. So there, it's it gets packed fast. Like there was no camping around both lakes when I was up there. Uh, and I, I went up on a Saturday morning. I mean morning. 3 a.m. wake up call morning to be on the mountain base by like five mm-hmm. from my house. Yeah. And the reason is because, one, I was taking up two good friends that have not been up on that mountain and wanted to enjoy and appreciate the outdoors. And really, that mountain needs to be taken in on the early morning. We were, I believe, um, 530 was about sunrise. We were on its eastern face right around 545. Mm. And I got a stellar shot. Matter of fact, will be the cover of this episode. Killer. Um, And what's great about that is... Winchester Mountain, yes, you gain a lot, a, a fairly good amount of elevation. It's a mountain. It's a mountain. But uh, the, the folks that I was with, they're not rugged, adventuring, hitting every mountain every weekend type of people. Matter of fact, one of them said to me, it's like, I, I don't know if we can keep going. Dude, we got all day, literally. That's how I see things when I go out there is you have all day. It is not a mad rush. We are used to the nine to five. I got to punch in, punch out. When you go out to the mountains, drop that attitude. Oh, you don't. That doesn't exist. Once you hit that county line, that stuff doesn't exist. And that's what I call finding my mental north, because I've mentioned this uh, probably about four or five months ago. Every three or so months, I need to recalibrate. I need to recheck myself. And I usually go out somewhere, parts unknown, where you don't get cell service. Because I need to find that it, my, my internal compass needs to redirect. And more and more people, if I, th- I think if more and more folks just looked at getting into our wonderful outdoors for as much sun as we get remaining in our summer, and I hope it's a, a, a longer, but I hope for that Bellingham Bay breeze because it is a bit toasty. Yes. I think if more and more people appreciated the outdoors just from the perspective of disconnect, forget your Instagram, don't worry about anything except for breathing, and you, there's, there's a goal in front of you. Like There's an end point. There is a summit. There is a vista. And if you don't make it to the summit, that's fine. It's the journey getting up there and unwinding the nine to five, five day a week lifestyle that we get entrenched with. This is summer and summer in the Pacific Northwest. We work hard to play hard. Well so said. enjoy it. Well said. Hey, kids, I got a challenge for you. Do what AJ says. Go up <laughs> to the higher elevations and don't take a picture of it. Just actually see it with your own eyes and lock that into your brain for a long-term memory. Kind of like an inside out, one of those little long-term memories that go into your brain. <laughs> I after haven't you seen goes, that film yet. You, have, you haven't seen Inside Out? No, not yet. I see the red guys flaming up on you. That's my favorite character. Okay, I, you must see this movie Homework later. assignment. We homework to- assignment. We totally tangented. Uh, all right, very, very cool. Tangented. <laughs> tangented. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get back off the mountain. Yes. And let's talk about the lowlands. Yes. Uh, what's been going on around uh, Bellingham that you've noticed? So something near, um, matter of fact, our neck of the woods is Barkley Village Farmer's Market. They, I wasn't aware of this. They have a farmer's market. They, they do now. So like so many districts have these farmer's markets, right. downtown, Fairhaven, right. Northwest, uh, Birchwood. The one, yeah, the one that you told now me about. Now we got yeah. Barkley. Cool. Yeah. So, and it's new. So I, apparently a couple of years, I talked to one of the, the farmers that were there and a couple of years back they tried it, but Barkley was still up and coming. Like there yes. wasn't a lot there a couple of years ago. Uh, and now as of uh, this August, I think um, at the time of this recording, I think this will be the third week 
uh, that it's been going on. And basically, it's it's a farmer's market in, uh, at the Village Green. Now, if you don't know what the Village Green is, you're probably thinking, oh, it must be near Hagen or that little... Um, gazebo? Gazebo. Th- mm-hmm. That's not it. Okay. That's not it. Uh, this is off of Rim- Rimland Drive. And that's where like On Rice, Robex... Barre uh, Studio... Yeah, back yes. there. So it's on the other side of the street. Uh, there's a little green. I and mean, it's funny... I didn't know it was there. It is a well manicured green, by the way. Like it, it this grass could it was picture perfect. Uh, what's cool is it, it's it's really low key. There was only a couple of farmers there. I I picked up some beets. You know, cool. uh, needed needed some beets. Way to be healthy there, amigo. Gee, I wonder where that's going to go. <laughs> but uh, food trucks, uh, lawn games. Uh, according to their release, um, there's supposedly about ten vendors that will show up at the this this farmers market. When we were there, I think there was uh, four. Um, farmers there. It runs from uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. for like the food trucks, taco truck and stuff. And then you stick around from 4 to 6 p.m. is when the farmers come and they bring their delicious fresh produce that you can buy like my beets and stuff. And yeah, so check it out. I, I, I liked it. It was really cool because I don't like crowds and I, I love our farmers markets, but man, they're really hopping. And this one is still kind of the undiscovered gem. Ah, uh, yes. The, what I seek out in Bellingham, uh, c- kind of appropriate for the lunchtime. Yeah. Now, now, uh, once again, what day is this? Uh, uh, so these are on Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Every, every, every Wednesday in this month of August. Uh, Wednesday lunches. Y'all have no excuse. Yeah. Time to head out to the uh, well-manicured Barkley Village Green as opposed to the Fairhaven Village Green. Now we got one in kind of northeastern yep. town, uh, which is good. And uh, get, get some good produce and some other local uh, farm to village green uh, goods and, and produce and things you, like that. You know what else is some good produce? What's that? The airwaves. The airwaves. You might, you might be listening to us on KMRE 102.3 FM. Low stinking power. <laughs> Community fa- home farm grown radio here in the heart of the city of subdued excitement. I tried. We'll, I tried. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work out the shtick later on. That's cool. <laughs> We've only had 89 of these to get our rhythm down. Anyway. Something else I wanted to dovetail into uh, all of our travels or at least the local travels because I'm trying to hit the the last bits of summer that we've got because school is around the corner and one of the cool things that I discovered is our neighbors way to the north how north Blaine <laughs> that's way north <laughs> not quite mental north but it's way north <laughs> so Blaine so this is cool so I haven't really I mean anybody who goes to Canada we go through Blaine right we see Blaine we say sup Blaine yes. and then you hit the the long wait that is the peace arch see previous episodes to, to get around that but uh, this year I decided to uh, take my little one up to this this festival that they have it's uh, the Blaine Maritime Festival or Drayton Harbor Days and what's cool about this is it was it was on August 4th and two tall ships were docked there. Hey now. The Hawaiian Chief and the Lady Washington. Now that's a star attraction, the Lady Washington. Yeah, so the Lady Washington is I, I think it's considered our state's vessel. Like we have like a state flower and stuff. I think this is our state vessel. We should be the state's podcast. We should. Jay Inslee, get back to me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Gov. What's up, Gov? <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to do a little bit of a just a brief snippet of history of Lady Washington because I learned a few things. Um, taking my son aboard Lady Washington is interesting because I thought this was the original vessel, and it's not. It's actually a replica. Okay. So originally, the Lady Washington uh, was a 90-ton brig. Um, Her early history is still in question. We still don't know all of it completely. But um, it was part of the Columbia Expedition when she left Boston Harbor on October 1st, 1787. She sailed around Cape Horn and uh, participated in maritime trade with our coastal Native Americans here. So she has a long history. Um, the original has a long history. And what's interesting is, is that there's a lot of firsts with this vessel. Uh, she's the first recorded vessel to make landfall on the Oregon coast near Tillamook, Oregon. And on top of that, like it was the first American flagged vessel to enter Japan. Uh, to, sailing across the Pacific from North America. Apparently. In the in late 1700s or yeah. early 1800s? Huh? Uh, yeah, late, uh, it has to be late 1700s because apparently uh, the original Lady Washington was lost at the mouth of, and you're going to have to uh, pardon me if my pronunciation is wrong here, the Mazito River uh, near Vigan, northwest Luzon. Uh, apparently it was lost at uh, July of 1797. Wow. Uh, so anyway, what's interesting is that this replica, however, okay, so 
this replica was, I guess, relaunched um, March 7th of 1989. Oh, really? How about that's, that? That's why I was trying to dovetail this Zing. for 89, right? The Lady Washington was built right here in Aberdeen, Washington, in, uh, by the Grays Harbor Historical Seaport. Uh, they're a 501c3 nonprofit, and uh, the it's a full-scale replica of the original Lady Washington. So anyway, I just I just wanted to bring that up for 89. Like I said, this this vessel is amazing. It's amazing to see, and I believe both the, the Hawaiian chief and the Lady Washington, the last couple of years or so, they've been in dock for repairs. So if you haven't seen them in a while, that's probably the reason why. And I believe their next sailing locally will be down in Anacortes, I believe at the end of this month or, or September time frame, if you want to take a look at these vessels. So- Sounds like a fun potential Labor Day weekend activity. Possibly. Take a look at their website. If you go to the, I believe it's called the Grace Harbor Historical Seaport um, dot org uh, website. I think they have their, their the upcoming sailings, but it's well worth it. Just to go aboard them, it's like a recommended $5 donation. Give them five bones. That's family entertainment. Um, they also have sailings where they also do like um, like this. They, they shoot cannon fodder and they have like a battle and stuff. And um, the these these boats are really cool. And if you're if you're if you because I know you're into pop culture and all that hipster yes. stuff, you have probably seen the Lady Washington in the small little film portraying the HMS uh, Interceptor, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yes, yeah, that would be our. Lady Washington. It's deporific. It's <laughs> deporific. Indeed. Savvy. That, that's <laughs> right. So as we're talking about episode 89, as we've done with some recent episodes, I take a look back in the Wayback Machine, not the website, but just in history, about what happened in 1989, now 29 years ago, golly, I'm old, and uh, you know, just is a, a look back for some of the important events, at least in my universe, that might have happened uh, almost three decades ago. Uh, funny thing, uh, in 1989, uh, do you remember... The two-word phrase Tiananmen Square. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, that happened in 1989 where uh, China had their uh, thing. Speaking of uprisings and protests, uh, South Africa uh, officially dismantled apartheid in Mm. 1989. And uh, as far as, you know, what life was like back then, almost it's only taken three decades to get to our current $3.50 gallon of gas price. Back in those days, it was 97 cents for a gallon of gas. I remember, vaguely remember that. And, I, you know, there was a, there was a movie, uh, I think it was 88, called uh, Die Hard. Oh, yeah. That's a small independent film. And one of those indie films. Yes. Yeah, I think right. it was one of those cheery holiday films. But anyway, yeah. there's a particular scene in Die Hard where I always like, look at that, where the, the police officer guy, not the main character, but one of the uh, co-stars, comes out of an AMPM with a bunch of Twinkies. And as he's approaching his uh, patrol car, the the gasoline prices are on the, the, the background. And it's like 87 cents or something Whoa. a gallon. I'm like, no way. Anyway, 97 cents a <laughs> gallon. 29 years ago. Funny thing happened in technology back in 1989, AJ. Uh, The 486 microprocessor was the hot uh, item for personal computers. I remember working on 486s. Uh, Those were some impressive 486s. Uh, And yes, they were all over the place. That was when I really started to dive into... uh, the computers in high school, when I was in high school, mm-hmm. no comment from you. I understand. Um, that was kind of like the, the new hotness. But also in the technology world, uh, Microsoft debuted their Office Suite in 1989, version 1.0, folks. Hi, my name is Clippy. Chris, it looks like you're making a podcast. How can I help? I don't even think the Clippy was Clippy. around. Yeah, no, Clip- that was... Clippy was just Clip. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is way <laughs> pre-Windows 95 operating system days. So it's like Windows for work groups or, or even... No, this might have been 3... No, it might have been... It was after 3.1, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In the old days. But yeah, the first version of Office came out in 89. Uh, tuning into sports, uh, the San Francisco 49ers defeated the Cincinnati Bengals in the NFL Super Bowl that no one, one cared cares about. about. And in the NBA uh, championships, the Detroit Pistons swept the LA Lakers, which... In, oh, snap. Uh, oh, snap. It used to be like the 76ers, the Celtics, and the Lakers were always going through the 80s. And, doing, and all of a sudden, Detroit comes in and goes, thwap. Uh, and then in the World Series, a rather... Uh, historical World Series in, in, in a way. This was called uh, the, the, well, San Francisco Giants uh, t- played the Oakland Athletics. 
And the A's swept the Giants for four games. However, a big thing occurred in which there was a huge earthquake that happened during the, uh, one of the World Series games. And uh, that, that was a lot of national headlines when you only had – or national news, uh, breaking news, when you only had three channels to uh, tune in on for the most part. So, yeah, the uh, Oakland A's swept the uh, San Francisco Giants in the Bay Bridge uh, series, Gold, uh, Golden Gate Bridge uh, series, I think. Uh, in movies, even though I referenced Die Hard, I think that was 87 or 88. That I forget was before which. 80, yeah. But um, Batman with Michael Keaton, the original one, came out. Oh, yeah. And uh, what is your story, AJ? Dead Poet Society uh, came out in 89. What My, will your verse be? What will your verse be? Thank you, for, uh, as I butchered the quote. Uh, thank you for correcting me. My wife's favorite movie, Dead <laughs> Poet Society. Um, and oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. When Harry Met Sally uh, was in oh. theaters as well. <laughs> And uh, of course, the one of the top five world's greatest movies uh, in 1989, Roadhouse, starring Patrick Swayze, was out there. A funny thing, uh, 89 seemed to be a year of sequels as far as uh, Ghostbusters 2, uh, Back to the Future 2, oh, yeah. Lethal Weapon 2, and The Fly 2 were all uh, in movie theaters uh, in, in that year. And as I alluded to in that horribly hastily put together hook, <laughs> uh, which was pretty good alliteration. Uh, Millie Vanilli really hit it big uh, with uh, too many songs that I don't want to mention, but Richard Marks is right here waiting for you. That was the ballad of the year for all those slow dances in high school that I never got to slow dance to. That was playing. Uh, Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation. We are all a part of the Rhythm Nation or something like that. But in One Hit Wonders, uh, pop quiz, AJ, who did the song Pump Up the Jam? I don't even know what came out of your mouth. What? Pump up the jam. Pump it oh, up. Oh, that and, song. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea. Technotronic. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, one hit wonder uh, from 89 and uh, one of my favorite uh, rappers, Tone Loke, hit it big with Wild Thing and Funky Cole Medina. And the, in the age of MTV, is, it's really hitting its apex of music videos. Chris, Chris, have you not understood something about me in 89 episodes? When it comes to pop culture, you are the king and I'm just this weird squire that's it's just like, yeah, right, what he said. <laughs> it's my world. Everyone else is just paying rent. <laughs> but anyway, that was a look back in 1989, 29 years ago. Oh, my goodness. AJ, uh, put a smile back on my face uh, and give me some hope for the well, future. You're the one that, that started with the heavy topics in his history right well, then and you know, there. That, that was a monumental year for a lot of uh, you know changes in society, but let's get on a better hook. So on a, on, a, on a better stride, in gear acquisition... Talk to me, Goose. A couple of episodes back, I mentioned this cool, nifty little traffic cam that my pops got me for, for Christmas. But anyway, I, I really have enjoyed having a traffic cam. Uh, if not anything, I've caught bad drivers. Oh, cool. Uh, and... Luckily, I've not been hit again, so my wife lovingly calls it our uh, digital talisman of uh, good vibes and not getting hit. I only had it in one vehicle, and suction, uncu- suction cupping it and suction cupping it, which always up being a pain. So I did a little bit of research, and uh, I found uh, a second one. There's nothing wrong with the Uniden. I, I like it. It's, the Eyewitness is still a great bargain bin suction cup mount one. Uh, but I have an, uh, another one that's a little bit more updated and at the same about the same price point, about 50 bones. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. It's uh, by a, a Chinese company called Yi, Y-I. Hmm. And it's just their Yi dash cam. For 50 bucks, what do you get? You get a full HD, I think it's like 60 frames a second, or you can bump it up to a 2.5K, so not 4K, but the smaller version, uh, 30 frames a second dash cam. Uh, comes with a suction cup mount, really long USB cord um, with a, a USB to cigarette lighter to USB plug, so it's not a proprietary plug, it's just a USB plug. And I, I was able to retrofit it because my vehicle actually has the um, pr- proprietary, I guess, uh, GoPro mount. So I was able to rig up something so that I could slide this into my GoPro clip so I didn't have to have anything extra. Cool. But for, for 50 bucks, what's cool about this is it has Wi-Fi. So something I didn't realize, I didn't really think about it since after the accident is, let's say I did get into an accident and let's say there was a, some heckling or argument of, you know, he said, she said, I could attach my phone wirelessly to my traffic cam and potentially kind of just just show the officer on, on the scene like, hey, you know, when I say this happened, look. Like I could physically show them. I don't know how that how that uh, pans legally, but um, hopefully I don't ever have to deal with it. But it was kind of the the draw that kind of made me go, huh? 
you know, uh, it's just a nice feature. 50 bucks for an equalizer. Yeah. If uh, you are in the right. Yeah, right. <laughs> in a collision. Right. Uh, to have that kind of immediate... Let's turn to the instant replay. Right. Uh, in in a situation like this, not only is this going to be uh, helpful for your insurance company, but it's also good for the police report. Right. Uh, for what happened, and golly, with the holidays coming around uh, this year, what a great idea mm-hmm. uh, to be able to you know for those that may not have modern cars that would have built-in USB uh, drives and stuff. The cigarette lighter is a great accessory. Yeah. I think they thought of that. So it's why I why I ye um, and they they've got some other features that I don't really use on it um it has like the i'm going to call it traffic avoidance system i don't know what they call it uh but basically like if you start weaving in your lanes it can beep at you and stuff when you shut down your vehicle it gives you a drive report so it can it can actually tell um because it has a gyro in it because when you get into an accident it immediately locks your file so that you don't overwrite it but the traf the 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 drive report is when you shut down your your vehicle the camera before it powers down shows you how many hard stops you did how many uh jackrabbit uh starts that you did um it, it's just kind of a a nice reminder of hey drive a little bit nicer i'm watching you hashtag #drive analytics we're going to see a lot of this in iOS 12 with screen time. Right. What a great way to get a little bit of like, oh, here's how bad you were behind the wheel and ways to improve. Yeah. It, it tells you how long you've been driving yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And no, great it, information. Yeah. It just, I, it was for 50 bucks, this little box that's very well, um, like industrial design speaking here, very well designed. Um, it's a very slick looking product. It doesn't look... It doesn't look like a, a box like a GoPro, but it doesn't look like one of these, you know, dollar two ninety five um, suction cup uh, cameras from nineteen ninety seven or nineteen eighty nine. Uh, it just it looks it's inconspicuous. It's well built, and so far I haven't had really any problems with it. It just you plug it, you play, you download an app. Matter of fact, it, uh, when you start up the camera, it prompts you with a QR code that you can use on any device because even on Apple, if you just bring up the camera app, it's a QR code reader um, integrated into iOS. So it'll just take you to the app store. Like there's no searching. There was no fumbling with this thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, one question that I do have, AJ, does it have a reversible, like a front facing camera to take a selfie when you're at a stoplight? Uh, I'm just going to ignore that you said that. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, well, maybe the $75 please version. Please don't selfie while driving. I this d- is a loving reminder from the Bell Podcast. I- indeed. And... <laughs> God. Yeah, I think we should probably wrap this up. Yeah, let's think? take a fork in it. All right. That wraps it up for this 89th edition of the Bellingham Podcast. Thank you again so much for listening to us, rating us, reviewing us, wherever you like to get our podcast. Remember, if you're in the Bellingham area, you might be listening to us on homegrown KMRE 102.3 FM. Low power. Community radio here in the heart of the city by the Salish Sea. And on that note, welcome back, Chris. I'm AJ Barsay. Glad to be back and uh, glad you're back too, AJ. Uh, Thanks again, once again, y'all out there in podcast land for listening to us on the Bellingham Podcast. The 90s are coming. The 90s are coming. (laughs) Like winter, 90s are coming. (laughs) 